Hey everyone, I'm Jay. I'm Sophia. I'm Fishtix. And I'm Scott. Welcome to Witches Betwixt. For the purposes of this episode, it does seem fitting to have a little bit of a theme, which is crossroads and new beginnings, and not even new beginnings, but crossroads and like <sighs> catch up spaces, Cause, like, moments in transition, well, things like that. Kind of. Because Scott was just talking about how a whole bunch has changed with them and we haven't seen them for a while. So it's going to be a bit of a catch-up episode between where we've been and where they are. And I've been doing a lot of crossroads workings with Hikate. In case y'all didn't know, it was a new moon as of 7 a.m. this morning. So you're within her space right now still. So it's uh, real fucking timely for that, I might say. I would agree. Because mm, I was good. I was kind of mentioning earlier how my uh my Saturn return has come to kick my ass. <laughs> uh, Scott, I got me a fami. Did you? Yeah, let me show you. Yeah, definitely. And Is that like... what? Sorry, go ahead. No, was, I because Jay hadn't told me it was the Saturn return, which explains a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, me and me and Scott. So, like, I've seen Scott during this uh, mystical sabbatical of theirs. Um, no, we uh, we got together for uh, was it? Two, it was two rituals that we got together for mm -hmm. two rituals. Yeah, because Jim couldn't find a space to host, and I hosted them at my house. So it was the uh, fall equinox and. The one that comes before it. I'm blanking. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. Ooh. And if you zoom in on it, it's got the crescent moons lined up. Oh, that's wow. actually exactly where my eye went to. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's really I got nice. that at a fucking thrift shop at a three-way crossroads on the waning moon. And I just happened to be, like, <laughs> buying some black dresses. And then I went up to the counter, and I saw the knife underneath. And I'm like, can I see the knife? And she looked at me kind of scared. And she's like, oh, sure. I open it up, and it's, like, an athame. And there's fucking crescent moons on it. I'm like, oh, how much? And she's like, $14. And I'm like, oh, my God, yes. That's it? So I got Damn. I got that for fourteen fucking dollars. That is Not fourteen dollars. It's, it's handmade. Like I'm telling you, the iron wrap on it, you can tell it's been done around by hand and ground down. Like this is a handmade afame. It's beautiful. That is absolutely yeah. stunning. It's also seen some shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fucking old, and you can tell the last person who tried to sharpen it up fucked it up with a grinder, and like the blade was like no. And came to me because like I can actually repair this blade and actually turn it into a true sharp shined up polished knife because I know how to work steel. So it's fucking perfect. So for, for context and for I don't know if anyone knows the, the Canadian uh US dollar rate, I guess, but that is actually like more like eleven bucks US. <laughs> so that's yeah. even more dope. <laughs> that's crazy. Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this is it. We're here. It's fucking witches, bitches betwixt time. All four of us. I think it's really. Episodes. It's really We're cool that this stronger is stronger and faster and better from here on out. It's it's cool that it's the new moon. I thought that was um. Mm -hmm. yeah, we we yeah, didn't plan that. My time. This it was not planned. Wow. That is really interesting. I, it's just funny because my I did go there earlier. Um, and it was kind of like in succession of thoughts is sort of like, cause that was the first thought it was like, I was like, Oh yeah, it's like new moon time. I was like, I could feel that dark moon stuff going on. And then I was like, Oh, Hey, October, <laughs> I'm back to the podcast today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a day it was at first. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Everything lines up. Just feels good to be back into, into having like everyone here. Agreed. Um, I don't know. I never really like made an announcement on the podcast or even through social media that that's got that you had even really taken a sabbatical or a break. I mean, I feel like if you if you if you're current with the episodes, you know, you'll 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 hear a lack of a voice. But um, I don't know, Scott, did you want to go into like why you took the sabbatical and how it was helpful? I mean, like, yeah, because you know, yeah, I'm sure there's I... plenty of people out there who maybe need to do that in their own lives for something. I actually, yeah, that would actually be really cool. I wouldn't mind discussing it. I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I definitely, I, what I was only going to say was it's going to take me a minute to kind of like talk my way through it because it was yeah. very emotional. There wasn't much, uh, I mean, a lot of therapy, but, you know, 
it, it's you know gonna as is with me in this podcast it's all gonna be about my feelings right mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what that's what we do here it's kind of what we specialize in <laughs> so um yeah great no. at it well i mean like kind of i guess i guess like um what made you come to the conclusion that you had to step away? Because that's something that I never know how to do, right? Like, I don't know when I really need to step away from something for a little bit. When it started to become a detriment. Mm. When it started, when I, when it, when it stopped being, um, when the anxiety started getting worse. Mm-hmm. Like, I would sit here, which is, com- like, not to say that I don't have any anxiety right now, but this is more like a healthy anxiety. Like, a little bit of anxiety is good. That's normal. But when it was making me nauseous and I was disassociating and I was reacting badly to the podcast um, Mm -hmm. and other things, it wasn't just the podcast, but um, that's when I was like, okay, so something is wrong. And it was kind of in this time when I was working on like boundaries. So Mm -hmm. like, it was kind of like this, I need to hedge this out for now. So that way I can come back to it in a healthier, happier more uh sound whatever more not even sound but more having a a more stable um foundation because i just felt like i was going through this deep transition which uh you know i I, which uh by the way speaking of saturn returns i realized that i had went through mine in for like my you know 29th year right and i didn't realize that that was what was happening so it all kind of made sense um so yeah so it was just when it started to hurt me is when i start when i realized i had to step away that makes sense i mean i kind of like i kind of had to put things on pause and i still have yet to (laughs) fucking get that episode edited um i put things on pause because pagan pride season started and i thought i could juggle everything and i realized i just really couldn't and so like in a way it was a sabbatical but not really because i was still like devoting a lot of energy to something else Mm -hmm. um but i don't know it's it's definitely um it's definitely hard to grapple with that feeling of like oh i need to step away from this thing that i really you know need to do or want to do you know it's it's really hard to um to to deal with that particular thought and then enters your mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm it's, curious. Yeah, like, uh, it's never easy. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm curious, like, with uh, DKMU stuff, have you ever had to, like, take take a take a step, take a break? Constantly. Of? Mm-hmm. Little, little ways at different times. Like, sometimes it's like, I'm going to take a break from the server for the week and play video games. Haha, <laughs> I've been doing that for the past two weeks. You know, sometimes it's like, engage in what ways you have energy for it with, you know? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, like, with, with like, the choice to go on the sabbatical, I mean, to kind of go deeper into that, like, or at least more like what I learned while away was one being comfortable with being uncomfortable which i had already kind of started to do but there were just parts of things that i couldn't make sense of like being in the public eye i realized was terrifying um you know having you know a platform like we do and people engaging and people seeing that it became this this fear this uh I don't even know this this panic, if you will, of of the the ridicule and or the potential for ridicule, the mm-hmm. potential for like how do I cope with that? How do I, you know, kind of? And I mean, it could, I guess you can kind of simplify it and say it's like being afraid of what other people think about me. But I think it was I don't know somehow it felt bigger than that to me. But I guess that's what it was. You know, if we want to be realistic or whatever. Um, so I had to learn with being okay with being uncomfortable. Um, I had to learn about not taking everything uh, as aggression or like as confrontation, excuse me. Um, I had to learn how to deal with that. Um, I had to learn sort of once again, as I said in my, like when I, when I first messaged everyone, I was like, 
I have to step away and I said, uh, I don't know what I think anymore. You know, mm. like, I don't know what it is that I believe in anymore. And I don't exactly know if those were the right words either, but essentially it was just, I, I had like, not even a like a crisis of faith, quote unquote. It was just, I felt so far removed from my magic and from my spirits and I didn't really know how to navigate my life without that connection that sometimes I'm so ingrained in like because sometimes I you know in the past it's it, it's all I ever feel you know what I mean it's it's so prevalent they're everywhere all the time and, and, and not in a bad way just in a healthy kind of stabilizing way and when I don't when I didn't have that connection due to my own of course emotional upheaval um because they're always right there. Like, the more I come back, the more I feel. So whatever it was, it was just a lot of internal work that I had to do. It was just, I was getting scared of everything, and I, I needed to grow. That was another thing. I think um, my priorities weren't in order. And as much as I love the podcast, and I could have the podcast, but the thing is, is that I I can't have the podcast if I'm not doing anything outside of the podcast. Like... Mm-hmm. I have th- I have other things that I need to do for myself and I need to grow up. And, you know, as we've talked about many times on the podcast, being, uh, you know, a, a domestic abuse survivor and everything else, that really stunted me a lot. And now that I'm 30 years old and I'm, you know, at this point where I really need to start building a life for myself, but I'm kind of starting late in comparison to other people that kind of, uh, you know, peaked. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, in their early 20s, you know, Uh, and now it's just kind of like that was kind of my focus throughout um, my sabbatical, so much so that I actually managed, uh, I am now officially, officially a student again, and I will be starting officially classes in January. I have to, uh, the only thing I have to do is, thank you so much. I went by myself, no handholding, no one was there with me. Um, I talked to everyone by myself. I did not disassociate. I didn't have a panic attack. I breathed my way through it. And actually, it turned out that people are really friendly and that people actually want to help, uh, which was weird to find out <laughs> uh, for me for some reason. Um, and everyone was very nice and polite. And everyone really made that process really easy. So the only thing left to do, because I already have my FASFA, um, so all I need to do is uh, apply, uh, sign up for my classes uh, in about two weeks, a week, whatever it is. Uh, no, two weeks. So like late October, uh, which is when I could sign up for my January classes. And yeah, so I, I actually made moves. Um, and I, I really didn't need a lot when I took a sabbatical. Like I didn't, um, I didn't promise myself anything, but I, I wanted to do at least one thing, like one thing that moved my life forward on top of all the emotional work that I've done. Um, And I did, you know, I, you know, I I tried to, I tried to do a job thing too. Like I, I started looking at a behavioral health tech jobs, psych tech jobs. I realized that that maybe that was a little bit more, a a bigger bite than I can chew uh, at one time. So I figured let's just get myself in school, start, start uh, getting comfortable with classes again, because it's been some time. And then I'll start leaning into trying to find a um, entry level psych job, which is already a task in and of itself. Um, but I really want to start trying to lean into that so I can start to get some hours and some experience, which are really important in psych. So I, I made a plan. I uh, I don't do goals and stuff like that. Goals are ephemeral, and you can't really, um, for me anyway, not for other people. But for me, they don't really. They're they're you know, non-existent. So I, I try to make a plan that I can actually follow something that feels a little bit more real to me. Um, and yeah, things are, things are actually well. So that's kind of, I hope I've explained my, my little, uh, sojourn <laughs> away from the podcast. No, you definitely have. You've definitely, uh, yeah, it summarized sounds like it was it. really productive. Like, and that's that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. It, thank you so much. It, like, really, that means a lot because it it was like I mean, 
And it's funny because, like, you don't inherently think that the emotional stuff is, at least for me, like, I, because I've been, like I said, I've already been in therapy for so long. So sometimes, like, I kind of, sometimes I know that therapy is work. And other times when it's going really well, I forget that it's hard work and it just feels like it's every day. I don't know how to explain that. But I gotta um, make a quick joke. If we had a podcast t shirt, it'd be witches betwixt with our logo and then below it'd say go to therapy. Yes, it would. <laughs> Absolutely. Go to therapy. That might be the theme of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I will say, like, but it, you're, you are 100% right, uh, Fish. Um, all of it was productive. And I don't know, like, even, even like, uh, talking, like, even right now, there is a, like I can recognize a level of anxiety, but it's not um it's not debilitating. And I'm okay with it. And also too, like the best part is is like I can feel this sort of self assuredness that I didn't have previous, or at least that I had started to lose previously. And it's kind of back but even stronger. So, you know, I don't know. Like I, I'm just really happy with where I'm at. It's not, you know, and it's it's not like, you know, big sweeping changes but it, it is uh, a natural progression a process and i'm i don't know i've accepted that you know what i mean i'm not in a rush exactly i just want to keep moving forward you know yeah any so progress thanks, is good progress it really is Ab and, absolutely and like we're we're always overwhelmed with the idea of you got to do it fast it has to be overnight it has to be right fucking now but the truth is that like sweeping personal changes and shit are not something that happen overnight. They happen over many years. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's no shame in taking your fucking time because you want to make sure it all sticks. Like, that's the, I, I keep rushing myself for that same reason. I'm like, you know what? I've been in therapy for a year, just a year now. But like, I need to be better. I need to be doing better. Mm. It's like, but then I look back at all the changes and the difference between me now and me when yeah. I first started therapy and it's like, you know what? Those are some big ass changes, whether or not anybody would recognize it aside from myself. It's like, you're fucking doing it. You're doing it right. So take your time, make sure it all sticks, be aware of self and you fucking got this dude. Also like out of the parable of the turtle and the rabbit, and I know it sounds cheesy, but just like, honestly, things that you rush through tend to not stick nearly as much as things that you take your time when you're building up. Honest to God. Mm hmm. Yeah. I 100% I agree with that. I really do. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like, <laughs> I know, at least for me, when I try to rush through, a, like, a task, um, <laughs> I always mess up when I'm rushing through something. I can't multitask and stuff like that. Forget it. I, I, can I, only hate, to quote the one thing I hate to quote the military, but, like, um, a quote that they have is, um, cool is, cool is fast. Um, I can't remember it exactly, but they're basically saying that if you want to shoot fast, you have to be cool and slow because cool and slow leads you to actually get your shots, which makes you shoot faster. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay calm with everything you're doing. Like that's the first and most important thing. Absolutely. I think I found Absolutely. it. It's slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. That does make sense. Slow is slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. That is the one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's funny. That reminds me, um, even of like uh, older, um, uh, like uh, archery. Uh, how 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 kind of if you ever looked at like um, older forms of archery and how calm uh, the practitioners are, even to this day, there's there's a level of meditation that comes in with with older forms of archery and they're so fast um they're able to like hit things out of you know moving targets out of the sky and stuff yep. like that you know books mm -hmm. written about it called zen and the art of archery yeah so i mean it, it applies you know i think there's something Certainly to be said applies. about just like being the calm little center of your fucking world you are in control things cannot flap you and you are going to do things at your own fucking pace no matter whether mm -hmm. or not the world is okay with that you everybody expects you to hurry but you are going to take your own sweet fucking time on it because you have to and yeah. that see i love that you said that because that has also been like that's honestly one of the struggles that i have is kind of like not listening to the noise you know like people have you know like like we've we've discussed this a thousand times too but like the idea of like you know you're only worth as much as your production you know like as much as you can produce you know in our in our societies and um 
and and with that like you said fish like they, they have this expectation of you to you know it like because i'm not working things like that like people have have said things you know have said like oh i'm just i'm, I'm mooching i'm not participating um and it's it's funny because i try to tell people now it's like it's not like it's fun right like i'm not having fun with the slow process right like it's not ideal but it's what i need and it's what it's what's helping me get to a place where i can participate in whatever way that i you know feel i want to you know what i mean yeah uh but it is hard you know words hurt you know what i mean like and especially when you have uh like a society of people who you know like i said completely base someone's value off of their productivity in the workplace you know and words are one of the most painful things there is they fucking can be they really can be and like is it, this is something that that i kind of fought with when it was first invited to kind of come on and, and be one of the hosts in your stead and now now that you've come back you know one of the four it's like uh, this is something that you see in the culture community a lot like people will drag you for random ass shit that you said or things that don't line up with their beliefs and their personal paradigm mm -hmm. and one of the things that i find it necessary to remind people of every few months is that my and this is just relevant to magical practice but it really goes for fucking everything else too it's like my ability to do x thing does not depend on your fucking regard it doesn't right. nothing about what i'm doing or saying depends on the opinions of others yeah and sometimes you have to push back and remind people of that fact. It's like, you can not like me all you fucking want. You can choose not to follow my social media. You can choose not to listen to me on a podcast. But your oh criticism God. of your high handed fucking criticism of me as a magician, as a writer, as a person, as fucking anything has no relevance on my fucking life. In, in short, did I fucking ask? Right. Mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes right. I another thing to push back and let them know that. Mm -hmm. and another thing i hate is when you like give people information about stuff and they always try and spin it up into like what their idea of something means and like the worst is when they try and press you into making you think that you have like magical danger going on and you're not worried about it and you're calm and they're like trying to say that you're like under magical attack or something it's like yeah because usually i'm waiting for the upsell like okay so what <laughs> What snake fear. oil are you going to sell? try and sell me to fix my magical but, but danger? But, like, here's the thing. <laughs> Even if I was under magical attack, right. it does me no good to panic about it. That feeds into it. The best exactly. thing I can do is act like I'm not being attacked. If, let's say that, like, I got a horrible blackhead to the point where it was, like, disfiguring my face, right? Jesus. That's horrible, right? That could be the results of a curse if you told a witch you love to spend shit. Or oh, it could just God. be the fact that you were wiping your face with a dirty hand rag repeatedly, right? And there are those kind of drama witches that will... Um, constantly forget about the material causes of things that go on and always mm -hmm. look at it from a spiritual level and be like ah it says this you know and then try and make you feel like your your black head is like some some curse from <laughs> some witch on the other side of the world who you pissed off with your instagram post or something <laughs> <laughs> the world i'm not throwing shade at anybody specifically let me be clear too this is just like I, a I, trend that witches can have but dead ass i have a lot of shade to throw but i won't today um but yeah that that's, that's a whole ass thing it's like sorry the the causal world the world that operates under causality doesn't have time for your bullshit and all you're doing right now is trying to lather people up and create drama where there isn't any and spin up belief where there isn't any it's very vampy it's very vampy when i see it it's Seems... like, what are you what are you trying to do underneath all this are you thriving off mm. of this drama i think it's just a, it's Honestly, like feeding their own ego it seems it's a a big part. i'm gonna be really real i'm gonna circle back to right to what we were talking about before i don't even think it's feeding their ego i'm gonna be honest i think a lot of witches don't know how to socialize because we were bullied as children and never got to go to therapy and we're trying to make friends and we don't know how to do it in the best ways that's it uh, you know that let me drag you into my, into my weird ass <laughs> internal narrative and, and we'll be friends now uh yeah i hmm. but I like... it happens with so many people like um i have a witch friend right now who i love because they're like actually really well adjusted and i actually get to meet up with them and do stuff right now and it's like a breath of fresh air compared to the other people who like 
try and spin you up into the whole like you're lucifer <laughs> like <laughs> some crazy crazy shit like we had someone try and do that on the facebook page of our our domus page that has like they they tried to say that somebody was lucifer in their personal narrative and like uh, mm, that's just one of the lightest things they've done i'm not going to drag that person by name or anything but like <sighs> some people just don't know how to socialize or be humans and i just picture it's... you like in the morning sophia like cup of coffee in hand <laughs> like scrolling through the the facebook and you you see that post and you're like ah another day you know and i'm just gonna scr- be honest i spend <laughs> you're like that's nice dear <laughs> so little time on facebook people have to let me know about drama so i have yeah, to you're not search really it up the... to go find it at this point yeah you kind of just I'm, pop I'm it like... in I, I live on like Discord. I have Facebook, so you can reach me through Messenger. I do not look at my fucking feed. Like, if you tag me in a notification, I'll check that just to keep up with shit. But I am not scrolling through feeds. I'm not like checking it's through been... groups. I have I have way too much shit to do. It's been <laughs> very difficult my relationship with social media. So my wife actually just recently got off of most social, like all the big social medias, and I'm jealous <laughs> because. I feel like I can't, and in a way I can't because of the podcast, right? I mean, what's the easiest, most cost-effective way to spread anything that you're doing creatively? Well, it's social media. Mm-hmm. So I've I've kind of like, I don't even really use my personal Twitter anymore um, or my personal Instagram. I upload to that rarely, and I rarely even look through it. So mostly I, I end up um absorbing social media through the witches betwixt accounts and it's so wild because it's all witchy people so usually like if someone follows us i as long as they're not a bot or like one of those like spam like porn accounts or something like that i'll usually would you like to back. join the illuminati yeah <laughs> <laughs> or like I pay a thousand dollars for 25k followers Right, you know. It's not like a thousand dollars, it's like a hundred or whatever. Yeah, so as long as you're not a spam or bot, you know, I'll I'll follow you back. And so it's kind of become this weird echo chamber a little bit, but then sometimes you see people that like comment on other people on like other hot takes that people have and it's just like it's wild. And sometimes I'll like something, you know, like I'll just like a tweet. And then I have this thought, I'm like, oh man, like, wow, you could be, like, drug through the mud for this months from now if someone <laughs> is unhappy that you liked that tweet. Mm-hmm. And and I sat there, and, and, I, and I sat there with that thought, and I was like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> like, I really... Twitter I, is such hell. I don't even pay it mind. I won't go on it. It's just... Yeah, it, in a the, way... Here's the thing. In a way, I feel like this podcast is impenetrable. Like it's uncancelable because it was oh, kind of don't say that. no like it, like hear me out though like uncancelable in the sense like, of like it was never designed to be mainstream it was never designed to make anyone feel mm-hmm. a particular you know it was always it, the in, the idea behind it was to be this mess of information and thoughts and you know what I mean like a stream of consciousness kind of thing as opposed mm-hmm. to like this is the way it is you know. I suppose to cancel people, we have to be relevant in some regard. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, it's, oh, it's hard. I've been watching, like, I've been watching a lot of psych information and reading up on a lot of psych information related to the dopamine feedback loop that is social media. Mm, mm-hmm. And the more I read about it, the, the more grossed out I get. But the truth about, at least for me, is that I love social media in small doses. Yeah. So, like, I maintain it's useful. A, a, yeah it is it is like i maintain a cult facing social media on facebook and twitter and instagram and whatnot and i literally will not touch it until i get a little alarm because i have an alarm set every day post a shit post say something on twitter and then i immediately log the fuck off of it and that has helped a lot because it's easy to get trapped in the weird ass you know serotonin Mm -hmm. dopamine feedback loop of doom scrolling mm-hmm. and replying and getting into bullshit with other people. And some asshole fucking tags you in a reply and you get mad at them. See, and that's the thing. Like, mm-hmm. I used to be that person, like, and, and I'm 40, okay. Uh, social media is new to me as an adult. It was not something that existed when I was a child. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even have a fucking Facebook until like 2006, 2007. Um, mm-hmm. 
and I used to be that person that would haunt forums and get super fucking angry about things like someone is wrong on the internet. I must correct them. And it was just forums. I miss uh, them. Forums are great. I I miss news groups for that reason too. But news groups were also rage and should we make a forum? Yeah, yeah, we should. We should do that. Uh, (laughs) If if you want somebody to keep an eye on it, I'll 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 glance in at it once a day. I'll fuck around with the website. I'll see what I can do. (laughs) But like, I used to be the person that would just get high off of being mad. Mm. and righteous anger is a thing that a lot of people are very mm-hmm. well acquainted with now because that's the that's part and parcel of half of the things that go on online now anger feels really empowering when it's it, fresh <laughs> and when and it's fresh it, and when you feel yeah. like you have a sense of righteousness and mm-hmm. half the time that righteous anger is bullshit you don't yep, actually yep. have a good reason yeah. to be mad in the first place so mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know catch yourself getting mad about social media sit back and ask like do number one do i have a reason to be angry about this number two does being angry about it even if i have a reason do me any fucking good right mm-hmm. and if it doesn't log the fuck off yep. like, like it's yeah. it's it, it's a hard habit sometimes i will get i will get trapped in that but uh less often now that i'm a little more actively aware of it i will say I, I admire your effort to be able to like oh i have this alarm do this thing and then you just mm-hmm. do the thing i am fucking impressed by that <laughs> I am unable to do that. Like, like I'm ADHD and have some significant executive dysfunction. You know, I, what I've discovered is the beauty of the nag. So, mm. like, I legit bought one of the AI assistants for my house that nags me throughout the day to do certain things and reminds me to do things because part of executive dysfunction is that you don't perceive time in the same way as a neurotypical mm-hmm. person does. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> there was a there was a meme. Where, where the fuck did I post it? There was a meme that I saw the other day. It was ADHD gothic. Oh. And uh, one of them, one of them stood out real bad. It was like something that you need. Let me, let me just get it. And y'all talk while I, while I find this thing. But it was very, it was very apt, this whole thing. Here it is. Okay. Um, hang on a sec. There's a task that needs to be done. It should take 10 minutes. You check the clock. It's been five minutes. You check the clock. It's been two days. Yeah. Oh, shit. That, I, I feel fucking seen, yo. Yep. <laughs> real <Yeah>. seen. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> yep, like, yep. You need to set up a sequence, a cascade of nagger, nagger alarms on your, your, your computer, on your phone, on your, your AI assistant, if you have one, you know, just to, 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 to whinge at you to get shit done throughout the day. It helps mm-hmm. keep you a little more aware. Mm-hmm. Less easy to fall in to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what my... Uh what my social media is anymore <laughs> uh, to get away from to get away from the occult like the, the, the you know how it gets on those spaces right all the fu- all the fighting and you know i'm older than you so therefore i can talk down to you and mm-hmm. you know all that all that stuff you know so it all became like just like a lot of shirtless people that i find really sexy and like, now it's like it's nothing but just like eye candy but even that gets like toxic too yeah and i'm kind of like uh, so like like now like I, I i don't know i don't even know what my social media is anymore i really don't i'm trying to like go back to occult stuff now because like i don't know it just somehow it's like i don't want this toxic i want the other one again <laughs> Man, I can't, I can't imagine that Thirst Trap Twitter is is anything but, like, gorgeous and toxic at the same time. Oh, it, I mean, I, and mine is Instagram. I don't really use Twitter because I don't really understand it. But, like, the same thing, right? Same difference. I use yeah. Instagram because it's far less toxic than Twitter. You don't have to read the comments. And it's a lot of the time just photos. That's true. I, I need to That's adjust I do to the toxic hot girl. I do toxic hot girl Instagram, too. So it's fine. I... I subtly it's i like personally cave to western beauty standards and look that shit up and go oh wow that's so pretty because oh, it does look pretty but fuck it shouldn't be like the only standard of beauty fuck right agreed but anyways anyways one you thing i was gonna say, say that i had a realization <laughs> yeah <laughs> one thing i was gonna say that i had a realization on with um mental health stuff recently was like because of my own personal trauma um and we were talking about how people have the whole outrage complex. There's also the whole constant victimhood thing. Like, it's one thing to have been victimized and be put through some awful shit, because I've been through that myself, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm a trauma survivor. Um, I've been through a lot of abuse. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of it. Um, but the thing that really fucks me up is, as a trauma survivor, 
other trauma survivors, especially people who are super anxious and can't self-regulate, they have meltdowns and they very often get oppositional in their meltdowns where they target somebody and project their anxieties onto it because of whatever kind of trauma triggers I have, I tend to get targeted by those people a lot. And Mm. I've realized that like, to me, People who have been through abuse, who become extremely anxious to the point where they can't self-regulate and can't self-assess, are are harder to be around than people who aren't even aware of some of their shit sometimes, you know, but aren't necessarily super anxious. Because, like, you know, you can at least talk to people about their stuff sometimes, right? But, like, the way that people project their traumas onto other people is so 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 problematic and they don't realize they're doing it constantly and you'll have hurt Mm -hmm. people who make monsters out of other hurt people when they haven't even done something wrong half the time that well i'm not gonna say half the time because i don't have like figures and it's it's very case to case right but in a lot of cases like something gets blown way out of proportion because it brushes up with someone's trauma trigger and then that person just fucking like goes out of their way in some kind of self-righteous i can destroy your life now response and it's Mm -hmm. uh i it ties into what you were talking about with the whole social anxiety thing you know and i i just like i wish in modern times that people would start learning responsibility for their actions and how it actually has repercussions of human like lives and people's emotions and they always just say oh good well they were this as if like making a mistake writes a person off for the rest of their life and somehow makes it so that they're no longer worth living like that's extremely toxic as well and we need to fucking challenge it because it does not have a place in making a healthy healed world you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it really doesn't like people need to learn to identify and be responsible for their own triggers and this Mm -hmm. is this is something that kind of gets me some shade and quite frankly, some heat in mental health circles. But I feel like trigger warnings do far more harm than good for that reason. Yeah, because, because the first like, thing you're reading is this will contain blah, blah, blah. And you're like, damn, I don't want to think about that. But now I'm thinking about it. Exactly. And like I was taught early on that you have to be responsible for your own triggers. That is yep. not something that anybody else should be expected to accommodate for you. Unless it's something, you know, like. It's a, it's an accommodation that you are taking responsibility for yourself. Like, hey, I can't handle raised voices in a closed room, something like that. Mm-hmm. So in response, I am going to get this pair of filtering earbuds that helps cut down on noise. So if I don't hear you, that is why. See, that is responsibly, ta- that's taking responsibility for your mm-hmm. shit. Not making everybody else augment their behavior to make you comfortable. And Or like. I can't sleep um, if people, you know, chat past a certain time because it reminds me of my parents yelling. Well, you can you can get earbuds. You can like soundproof your your room, right? Like there's stuff that you can do to sleep silently, and also you can choose to living in a sit living situation where you're not surrounded by people. All that is a little harder with like living costs and class mm-hmm. and that also is very often tied into people having trauma and domestic abuse situations so it is a very very complex nuanced issue there it is. but it there, is. there's stuff you can take because fish is right like you can't you really 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 can't expect everybody else to tiptoe on yep. your triggers sometimes like there was this one person who um i was playing games at and she flipped her lid on me because i called her her screen name which she yelled was like oh that's my dead name and it was like uh, apparently her old last name which it's like she thinks she had told me but she hadn't because if she had I would have fucking remembered that I remember people's dead names pretty pretty easily but she got upset and she in her mind in her outrage said thought oh I must have told you and then lost it on me like I was dead naming her intentionally when I was just reading her screen name because I we were in the middle of something and I was trying to call out and I couldn't remember whose name that was right so it's like things like that you know and then and then i talked to her afterwards i'm like why don't you just change your name it's like a, it's like a, a quick little fee and then they were like oh well you know i don't have the money i'm like i will send you the money so you can change it it's five dollars like just change your damn name if it's that bad that you're gonna like blow up on people all of a sudden out of it like there's steps that you can tape like that is not a responsible position to have to tell everybody constantly don't call me this name that you see 
and I get name change stuff is very sensitive issue, but like to just scream at someone like that, it's just totally not fair. Right. And we, yeah. we do that all the time out of trauma. We think that like somebody is privy to our internal dialogue and they're not, you know, nobody has any idea of what you've been through in your life unless you tell them. Right. And even in, so, even when you tell them they're going to lack the qualia and mm -hmm. the, the personal experience with it, even if they have something that's very adjunct or parallel, it's still not exactly the same as what you've been through. So like, you can't expect mm -hmm. everybody to be fucking clairvoyant and a, a fucking mind reader and see mm -hmm. into, you can't. So you must communicate with people words. Like you have to use your fucking And we have word. to be compassionate. Like you have to hold space for other people and hold space for yourself and just understand that things are gonna happen and people are going to have miscommunications in class and we need to chill the fuck out or sorry mm -hmm. clash not class we need to chill the <laughs> fuck out and stop going for each other because the only way to make a future where the world's getting better is where we actually all work on healing collectively on an individual level together instead of this tear each other down constantly looking for an enemy because guess what if you're constantly looking for an enemy look in the fucking mirror because you're the one going around causing destruction in the world and you need to be focusing on healing yourself and other people because mm -hmm. we do not need to fucking destroy ourselves endlessly for Forever. like <laughs> everything that the world has shown us for the past few hundred years shows us to, like just stop fighting start working your shit out and coming together and helping each other heal but we just refuse yep. to do that you know and it's, it's one of the things that i find myself talking more and more about this is the the notion of the benefit of the doubt and this started when my wife and i got married and it was so we didn't have a wedding or anything like that we just we went to the justice of the peace and we got married mm -hmm. And when you go to the Justice of the Peace in Texas, you have to actually go talk to the Justice of the Peace and have a, a, a meeting with them before you get married mm. because they want to make sure that, you know, you're 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 going to do this right. And it was this old man, this very post-retirement sort of old dude who just did weddings because he loved them. And we were one of the last ones he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And he called me mm -hmm. one night and he says, this is something I want to tell you and I want you to take it seriously. And I'm like, okay. He says, going forward, I want you to think about benefit of the doubt when it comes to your partner. If your wife says something to you that hurts or sets you off or triggers you, and this is something I've told her too, you have to go into that scenario with the understanding that nine times out of 10, she didn't mean to hurt you. I mean, nine times out of 10 is just like like leaving, you know, air there, but she's never going to intentionally hurt you. Yeah. And so you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. And if you get upset, ask yourself, did they really mean to hurt you? Or was this just an accidental thing that happened? And so that, that started, and that's the best piece of advice in a relationship I've ever been given. But if you apply that to everybody around you and like you give everyone the benefit of the fucking doubt when they do something like that and you say to yourself, you know what? This is my friend. Mm -hmm. I've known them for X long. Yeah. We've had all these good times together. Would, sh would she or he really say or do X thing to me that would cause me this amount of hurt? And the answer is almost always no. No. Yep. And um, then you, like you sit there and you start thinking about like, are they I'm going fine. through how, what, what's going on with them? Are they having a bad day? What's, are they okay? And when you, when you take it, you, when you it, it makes it far less personal when that kind of thing happens. And it also leaves you the ability to be like, yo, what's, what's going on with you? Are you all right? Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. You know, and it, 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 it isolate, it doesn't really isolate you from the problem, but it takes the, the sting out of it when you can sit there and go, well, okay, they didn't mean to hurt me like that. So something's going on with them. So why don't I fucking ask? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? It was, it was exactly that, uh, like in early in the conversation when I had said about going to school by myself and everyone was so nice and I was so surprised that people really want to help. And it was that exact same benefit of the doubt because I was, you know, I was always so distrusting. I was always so fearful due to other, um, due to other experiences. But when I gave these people who were different people, the benefit of the doubt and they surprised me, I was pleasantly surprised. They wanted to help. It was it was it was exactly this exactly what we're talking about right now that made for me the ability to keep moving forward. Um, when we approach other people uh, in a compassionate way, and we understand, you know, that nine times out of ten people are not trying to be vicious um, or mean or cruel or what have you, 
I, I don't know. Things just tend to work a little bit better. You know what I mean? I mean, what is that old saying about you get more with sugar, you know, than you do with vinegar or yeah, whatever? You, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Oh, yeah. 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 And that's that's a thing. And you see that get used a lot for tone policing, but that's not really what we're talking about here. It's like if you just go into something without a chip on your shoulder, without doing all that predictive modeling and like I'm socially anxious too. like if I have to go to the DMV, for example, I need to know about that multiple days in advance. <laughs> I need to know exactly what paperwork I need when I get there. And then despite my best intentions, otherwise, my head will go through all the predictive modeling looking at every every time i've been to the dmv before that all the nasty stories i've heard about the dmv and be like oh god well what if this happens what if this happens and by the time i'm getting ready to go and getting in the car i have worked myself up and i've got such a nasty ass chip on my shoulder for all the bad mm -hmm. shit that's gonna happen that i go in there with a bad fucking attitude and people can pick up that bad attitude whether or not you say anything because we're pattern seeking we're, we're pattern seeking engines part of your brain is devoted yep. to that so they're looking at it's you're, safety. You're, <laughs> it is it is safety and the problem with it is if you work yourself up to that point and you're like this is going to suck this is going to be fucking awful this person's going to say this shit to me or i'm not going to have this right you go into it with that attitude people pick up on that from your expression and your tone of voice and your word choice and your body language and so everybody around you is also going to be put the fuck off and they're going to have chips on their shoulder too because we communicate in nonverbal ways all the time far more than we do verbally mm -hmm. yep so like you shoot yourself in the foot every time you do it too and it's 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 a struggle <laughs> yeah and people very seldomly judge things like anxiety or frustration as like an internal thing like let's say that you're frustrated at was something your roommate said and you come in all pissed off to the office you know nobody takes that as you're mad about something else they're always going to take it as directed at them right and it's something that both parties have to be mindful of too you know like very often if someone's got something going on and they're pissed off they're you're probably not mad at you unless they're expressing it to you um that you're the cause of it right um and same thing with like if you come into something and you're pissed off about something before and then all of a sudden everybody's pissed off at you and you're like well i'm not mad at any of you they're already reading your hostility as directed at them because you've brought it into their space and made them have to experience it and interact with it right so it's it's kind of one of those things where like the energy that you bring forth people are always going to be responding to and there's a quote i heard at a women's conference a long time ago it's more often how you say it in your tone than the words you're saying absolutely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely like god this is this is gonna be the most ridiculous example ever but last night we were we were shit posting sonic memes and one of my favorite my, my favorite scenes from the the sonic movie is the the scene where robotnik is dancing and he stops because his assistant comes in and is like, I, did you want this latte? Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them. Like, was that? Are you talking about the one uh, with Jim Carrey, like the new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that movie the, was the, legitimately the good. One. It was it a was, legitimately really good. good movie. But like when you, it depends on how you deliver the tone and, and whatnot. Like if I were to yell at my wife in the car, just randomly, I love you. She's going to be put the fuck off no matter what mm -hmm. I say. It's it's all about how you say things and the tone that you deliver them in and and the context. And even if it's just a slight discordance, and this is something again I noticed like a couple of days ago. I was really stoned, and when I'm stoned, I tend to hear things differently than I usually do. So like if I'm if we were watching a drug ad that was between parts of a, a show <laughs> we were watching, and this drug ad was for this this asthma drug, and it was all this happy backgrounds you know the typical like pharmaceutical company mm -hmm. commercial shit mm -hmm. I, I know that you guys in canada don't see a lot of that but we do in the states like any chance they can oh we do we just i don't but, watch cable anymore <laughs> yeah that's i don't have to see it very often but in this case i was real stoned and i was watching this video these pastoral landscapes people laughing people putting out a picnic and shit but the voice is talking like this and she sounds like she's <laughs> delivering some very dangerous, very terrible <laughs> yeah. information about side effects. <laughs> and it, for a second there, I was wondering if we were like watching, like we had somehow switched over to one of the Adult Swim infomercials because it was such a <laughs> glaring difference between the tone of the voice and what I was seeing on the screen. But that, that's, that's something that can tweak people out subtly too. So like if you're trying to deliver things in a calm tone, but you're still in a shit mood, 
and you're trying to sound like you're normal, even if they consciously don't pick up that, that something isn't quite right, the subconscious is going to be like, yo, um, this doesn't match. You need to keep an eye on oh. this person and they'll get well, a gut feeling. Give you some examples. Anxiety, you know, I'm fine versus oh. I'm, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, the, the I'm fine is totally like a generally like an honest, no, nah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Um, but the whole I'm fine is like a I am so disappointed in you, but I can't even express it right now. So I'm just going to say that I'm fine because it avoids the whole thing. Tone and context, right. right? And it leaves you to sit there and try to dredge up all the reasons why that person might not be fine. And because everybody is a little mm-hmm. bit anxious socially it's always going to be self-focused at first always and passive aggression really is a thing in society so some people deliberately do it and some people have no clue that they're coming off as passive aggressive and they'll be like really that's passive aggressive i'm sorry i wasn't trying to be yeah it's a thing like it's funny you mentioned uh commercials fish because i had a similar reaction i was in a horrible mood a couple days ago and like this commercial came on the TV. I don't even know what the hell the commercial was for, but it was like this guy, he's all chipper, and he's like, Hi, I'm Nick. And my initial reaction was, <sighs> Fuck you, Nick. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, get <laughs> fucked, Nick. <laughs> like, I knew nothing about Nick. Didn't know a damn thing about the guy. He was so chipper and happy, and I was like, Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like, I can tell you a few things about Nick. He's working for an unforgiving director who's constantly telling him, more chipper, happy, more at the edges of your mouth, smile with your eyes more, look this way, don't look directly at there. He's constantly being micromanaged for every body movement and facial expression when he's I could first never, those words. I could Another never take and get it right 137 <laughs> times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, commercials aren't that bad because they don't have the budget for 137 takes, so they generally just find the most juiced person they can find fine for the role yeah they're, they're looking at the, like amp for it you know like they're looking at headshots going which one has the cocaine eyed sheen of crazy it's usually <laughs> like, the let's person that who's one. trying to break get the breakout role in their career so they're hitting up a bunch of commercials honestly. so they're finding the oh, people yeah. who reek of desperation mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, okay hold on jay you just described most of the film industry yeah, yeah. honestly <laughs> <laughs> i yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like how else do you make it in that industry you have to like i don't know uh, you you're, have either, to... you're either desperate or you have cold indifference and money mm. yeah that's <laughs> like but for the most part you're desperate because yeah. you don't want to work as a barista anymore you don't want to work at the denny's on the late shift anymore but this is the only way you can pay your bills and eat mm-hmm. you just really want someone to take your fucking headshot yeah <laughs> <laughs> please please pick me please for anyone out there not in... to hog the podcast talking about movies but there's a thing called movie set memes and one of the best ones is i didn't want to work um a five day a week job now i work 24 <laughs> 7 <laughs> yep uh that's film oh, yep no uh not for anyone i do actually know a couple people who are looking to you know make it in the acting world i f- like no no shade here we're just all jokes here because that shit is hard like i watch it is these, it's hard i watch um you know my friends that are out there and i'm like man you, you uh one of my wife's friends picked up picked up her whole life just drove and packed up in a car and went out to california because that's the only way you can really it depends you know, there's get acting going. in numerous locations you just have to be in the right area and know where the film yeah. is and be catered around it and there's like a lot of stipulations um it's like one I of those careers who... that you seem to you like seem to make big sacrifices for and it's kind of interesting yeah. it's like when these movies come out when these shows come out you know we all have our opinions and we critique them and we we do the fun thing that we do right and we talk about the media but like when we really think about like where those people came from to portray those characters all the bullshit they went through it it puts perspective on things it really does and how many fucking people work in film like not to turn this whole into a cinema podcast since i started working in film but like there's so many goddamn people involved in it if you actually watch the kate like the the scenes and just look at how many people do the catering you know like come on yeah trust me well, Sophia, you have a idea. way more interesting job than i do i don't think anyone wants to know about title companies real estate and holding money in escrow 
<laughs> so I think we're yeah, all not good. lately. Because nobody wants to know about the TV show. <laughs> nobody wants to know about the fucking kids show I've worked on, and then the other show that has such a boring name. I can't even find out what the fuck it's about when I Google it. Okay. <sighs> God. What, what am I working on? I don't know. I'll tell you after it's out when I actually fucking know and I can watch it and say, oh, that's what this was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I, I have to say, in regard to film, and it, it it really applies everywhere. But in regard to film, for a while, at the end of every credit scene, you would see this job or this film provided jobs for you know thirteen thousand people, twenty thousand mm-hmm. people, oh, thirty thousand people, and that that really kind of wakes you up to it. But it, but it's good that film has become decentralized. It's not it's not always about Hollywood anymore. You can be in Georgia, you can be in Canada, you can be in New Zealand, you can be in Hollywood in, North, baby. Like there's an ass load of different filming centers and and places where things are produced. It isn't just exclusively Hollywood driven now, which is pretty fucking rad, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, if you for a while there, if you wanted a job in film, you had to move to California. And that's not sustainable. The cost of living is fucking ridiculous. Like, yes, yeah. it is. How the fuck are you going to do that? You ain't going to do that. So, you know, um, to segue, also- I had. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to add to that, like, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned on the podcast before, but um, during, like, 2020, during lockdown, I get interested in, like, weird, like, niche psychological facts and, like, sort of, like, psychological history of things and, like, how we've approached different things throughout time. And one of those things is, like, entertainment and how it's, like, and why it's so important to the psyche of people. And there's a reason why throughout, like, the course of human history we've had, like, stories and dramas and plays like that kind of thing so like basically without entertainment we would essentially start all like we would all go stir crazy like we would we would start um kind of losing our shit without entertainment so entertainment is actually incredibly important to the human experience on a a emotional psychological level which i learned uh through studying weird stuff (laughs) You and I have a lot to talk about in that regard. Like uh, that's a a big part of of what I've studied and what I use in my writing. Um, oh, that's cool. I definitely want to. Yeah, <laughs> we're definitely narrative driven. We really are. We we need stories. We need to feed our heads with mm-hmm. ta- with wonder tales. And that's you know the the concept of mythology and the narrative arc and the narrative cycle. Is, is a big deal. And I, I frequently go back to Joseph Campbell, but really Joseph Campbell was just westernizing a notion that was come up with by a guy named Vladimir Prop, who was a Russian structuralist. And he, all he did, and this is what he did. This, this is what Prop did. It's fucking awesome. He took every Russian folktale he could find and broke them down into little nuances and little parts of a pattern. Like okay. there is a, there is a male hero who is a prince or a king or a future king and he is saving, you know, this damsel or this other variable. He is out searching for the elixir to heal his people. He's meeting with a witch to learn a dark secret, you know. And he could he got to the point where he could write out an entire folktale in a series of codes. And it was fascinating. And Joseph Campbell ended up picking up some of that. And then he also leaned into Jung and the collective unconscious and archetypes. archetypes yep. Yeah. And he came <laughs> up with the concept of, he wrote a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, and he established the notion of the monomyth. And the monomyth is a pattern of narrative style and storytelling that is seen across cultures that have no contact. Yeah. It's, it's written, it's hard coded into the human brain to want yeah. these, these narratives because we need them, desperately need them. I mean that that's a whole other. I mean, we, me, I'm sure we could all sit here and talk about like what exactly is you know archetype, right? Um, that that leads into a whole other an thing. Episode around it. Like egregores and zeitgeists and all and and fucking gestalt and, spirits, and all the things. You know what? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. While, <laughs> while the ideas are so, hot, I would say. I mean, we're we're at like an hour now, and I know we did want to kind of keep these not into the two hour range going mm-hmm. forward. We should so, do it sometime, though. Yeah, like maybe the next. We want to go session. for another like half hour ish because I feel like an hour and a half would be almost. Perfect. If there, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I just wanted to check in and let yeah. everyone know that we're at an hour. Um, but yeah, yeah, if we perfect. definitely have more to um, go. 
So here's what I wanted to segue to, which ties in perfectly with this. I wanted to catch up because it's been a while since we've talked shop, right? I wanted Mm -hmm. to catch up with Scott because we haven't um, talked about what we've been doing magically. Um, It's been like six fucking months since I've I've seen you. And like, (laughs) I've been working with like Hakate and like Thunder Spirits and I like conjured a fucking leak spirit out here and made a fucking deal with it. Like I've been, I've been doing some shit, Scott. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, just to hear that you're working with Hikate again it was was actually was like, whoa, full circle. <laughs> well, like, I, smashed, like, oh, I smashed the stash you last summer when I was like trying to revoke my magical craft during my mental health crisis, and then like later on, like met a fucking priestess of Hikate while you were away and became good friends with them, and I do uh, a fair amount of workings with them, and I've picked up a lot of more trad craft uh, techniques and teachings from them that you had very much. You be proud of. Now. You're getting a heart Pardon? from me. I'm giving you one of those <laughs> hearts right now. You just and, can't see it. <laughs> um, I would like to bring them on the epi- uh, the podcast for an episode to talk because I know you and them would just fucking click like two peas in a pod, and especially mm-hmm. with fish as well. So like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I've been I've been doing like um a lot more like witchcraft shit, although not like hard witchcraft because I don't know if I even want to use the w term because i don't necessarily do anything like malefic you know um and if i do it's because the fucker deserved it um but like fuck even tonight i'm gonna go pour out some um what is it pour out some olive oil at the crossroads above and below my my house because i have a a three-way above and below um and i would do like honey if i had honey and there's like more stuff that uh my friend mandrake does but i'm not gonna like try and copycat the ritual it's like it's definitely one thing that's awesome to be there and be present in like another witch's practice who's like had rituals that they've done in practice for a long time it's another thing to just immediately try and copy them and do what they're doing you know what i mean but you can pick up like little tips and techniques and like what um the god form or god or spirit you're working with likes you know so yeah, it's it's been it's been some shit, Scott. I mean, that's I, I I mean that's great. I mean, there's really not much I could say other than like I'm really happy to see that like I don't know you figured some stuff out, which I like. I kind of noticed when you said it. You have like I mean, just in your voice, there's a a different vibe, um, which is great. I mean, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. I can't say that much is like really progressed for me. One of the things that I've had to accept for myself was that, uh, as I heard it from uh, a witch, witchcraft isn't for always all the time, and sometimes it's okay to like fall off the horse. Um, I haven't been doing much uh, up until really recently, and what I've been doing recently has been very small little things. Um, it's been, you know, I, I recently came into possession of a very well-crafted uh, mandragora uh, oil uh, made Ooh. from made from uh, mandragora officinal, and uh, I've been um, anointing myself with that, working with the plant spirit of that. I did that before the podcast too, because it's like really great for protection and stuff. Um, and then what else was I doing? And then like uh, I do like. Um, I guess what you would consider, I, I mean, I use the, the, this word lightly, but prayer, I suppose. Um, I guess it's really what it is. Uh, talking with my spirits, you know, um, just having conversations, sort of uh, asking my spirits to help me find qualities within myself. I try not to make spirits like do things for me in that way. Sometimes I try to, most of the time, I try to have them help me find qualities within myself. You get what I'm saying? Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've been very simplistic. And mostly because I've realized that my living situation makes it really hard for me to do a lot. You know, it's two people living in one room. I know I'm kind of still on this. But I I just had to accept that it just makes it really hard to do everything I want to do. And, like, I'm just trying to find – I'm now learning how to work around that. Um. Yeah, like, I mean, I still have all the same spirits that I've always worked with. I try not to deviate too, too much, um, I guess because I'm comfortable, but I also haven't had the need 
also too i don't have the bandwidth to have too many relationships with too many spirits um yeah it takes energy and like they need being late like, they need to be regarded and stuff and like even the deal i made with the lake serpent i haven't like done anything with the water and i technically should and i should go down and commune with her more often and blah 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 it's like ah uh, it's a lot you know but the thing is too is like even with that like that's exactly like for me like that whole um there's this shame and i think all of us in the occult community can have felt it before when like you're just not feeling it you know like you're just not there right now and you start to experience this sort of shame of like i'm not witchy enough i'm not uh you know a culty enough you know and the thing oh, is look, is that like it it's it's always there waiting for you you know what i mean it's 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 right there um oh, the spirit it's... world isn't like it's not some far like once again it's not some as we know right i'm not telling anybody here but like it's not some far off distant place it's literally right next to you you know it's just it's it's right there and we can always go right back to it when we're ready to you know, mm -hmm. I, I we're, think, we're so, hmm? I think that, and, and I, I've heard a lot about this from a lot of different folks, but like what I end up keeping reminding people is, look, these are entities that don't exist with meat bodies. They don't at all. They are privy to far more information and are actively aware of far more information from the, I guess, spiritual substrate, whether you want to call it the astral or the ether or what the fuck ever, than we are. They are in tune with everything like that. And th these are entities that very frequently are far more intelligent and more experienced than we ourselves are. They get it. They understand it. The majority of them understand that you're going to have off days, off weeks, off months, off years, that you have other living people shit that you need to deal with. And there's no yeah. need to feel guilty about like dropping off for a while in regard to, you know, your relationship with an entity. You're not the first person to fucking do it. Mm -hmm. they understand it like when it's a servitor that's a little different but those are sustained just simply by your belief and by your attention and focus and regard for them that's different but in terms of relationships with with entities and spirits god forms egregores you know whatever archetypes whatever you want to call them they get it they they have the experiences of how many hundreds if not thousands of people living inside of them at all times yeah they're they're tapped into how many fucking people right now at this very minute that are working with them they get it they fucking get it <laughs> you know and if they don't get it then you probably knew Fuck that em. going in yeah it's like all things yeah. being equal if you're a spiritual fucking free agent and you know that this specific entity does not like being you know, briefly ghosted because you have a doctor's appointment or you're having a depressed cycle or because you get sick or any other number of things, you know that going in and you can kind of value assess whether that's an entity you want to deal with. Also, if that's an entity you should be working with in the first place, because yep. it could be telling you that it's one thing and it's potentially not what you think it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that like, is I don't know. Um, I don't fuck around on missing like my morning prayers, even though I could. And I have, and they're like, you're fine. <clears throat> but I feel like that guilt. And it's usually, there is, um, sometimes it can be hard to sort out your internal narrative from your spiritual narrative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes it's your spirits telling you one thing and sometimes it's your anxiety telling you another. Mm-hmm. And figuring I, mean, out the I, I like to think that like my spirits kind of know me by now. <laughs> they're kind of like, oh. He's he's doing a thing, you know what I mean? Now, granted, mm -hmm. this time around, it's funny because, the, like, with this with this go around, I will say, some part of me actually wonders if this wasn't sort of put in place. Um, one thing with my spirits is like, um, they like to kind of help me along. They kind of move things in place, and it would be in their nature to kind of be like we're not what you need to focus on right now. You are what you need to focus on right now. Your real life, your physical life needs to be focused on, you know? Mm -hmm. And if that meant sort of experiencing this, um, you know, intense, mundane, uh, you know, experience away from magic, then that's exactly what they'll do. And by progressing, I've actually felt... It's funny because through like the mundane, 
the, the sheer mundaneness of going to school and moving forward, I actually felt like that was an act of, um, not, uh, I guess you could call it maybe like, uh, like sacrifice, but also more like an act of devotion, I should say. Um, yeah. that's when I started feeling them again by doing exactly what I think it is that they've set up for me to do. Um, and of course, you know, they, they often take a very back seat, but all throughout, like at different points throughout this last six months, they would, um, each one would, would, uh, come to me in, in a different way, you know, and in very mundane ways. Like I remember there was one point where, um, I heard geese overhead at one point out of nowhere. I hadn't heard geese in ages. Now they could just be migrating, but it was one time and normally I hear them in the winter um, and I hear them a lot, um, or at least more than, you know, I would other times. And um, geese are really important to Nick Nevin. And, you know, for, for that to just be like this one, you know, thing that just happened while I was going through whatever it was at the time, it felt relevant, which is how I determine what's an omen. When, it, when, there, when there's a psychic impression along with an event, that's how I know it's an omen. Um, generally, if I don't feel anything, it's just a happenstance, a, a kawinky dink, you know. Um, but uh, then there were other like little, little, little. Uh, we're here, keep going, kind of moments. And it, through this kind of learning to surrender, sort of to myself, and surrender to the experience that is just living life and doing what you got to do or whatever. I don't know. I found this sort of peace in, you know, and, and I, I haven't been the most quote unquote witchy in a long, in a while, but now that I'm slowly, I, I actually like in, in these simple little things that I'm doing, working with the Mandragora oil, um, you know, sitting with the spirit of the Mandragora and, and, understanding you know the sorcerer's root right i mean like that's powerful for me you know what i mean um especially for my tradition the mandragora is a witching herb in traditional craft so that's that's you know that's a powerful spirit ally to have uh and that was gifted to me by um jay and i's friend uh jim who runs the the seasonal okay. rituals that we participate in yeah, you've mentioned him many times. We got to get him on this podcast. Yeah, uh, he actually got it from uh, Stephanie Gramasi, the the author, Raven Gramasi, the author who's who's passed on. Um, yeah, his wife his wife gave that to Jim, and he passed it along to me because he had another bottle of it. You know, and like doing these like simple little little things, these kind of devotional sort of just keeping up with with some spirit maintenance and just checking in with my spirits just going outside and feeling the you know the breeze or the sunshine and just talking to the spirits that that's kind of been i don't know that somehow has felt so powerful recently and it's not been anything ritualized or formal or you know and only now recently am i uh, you know i'm talking about spell work again um there are a few, there are some workings that I really need to get done. Um, I need to do. Uh, Darian needs a uh, job spell done, or he wants to help with one. He wants to do it himself, but he wants my help. Um, and then I actually forget. I actually forget. There was something else I needed done. I probably should have wrote it down. My memory is horrible. But um, mental health problems, yay. But uh, <laughs> They do yeah, like that. I know. But, I mean, you know, there's just this, I don't know, contentment with the mundane and mm -hmm. learning to bring them together. I realized that there was this strange separation that I had in my head that I never really realized before my sabbatical. I had my mundane life and I had my magical life and they weren't the same thing. Which was really weird, especially to someone like a folk magician and a trad witch, where like literally at the core of our tradition is the fact that mundane life and magical life are not two separate entities existing, you know, two separate even separate cogs. They're 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 this they're 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 one system. You know what I mean? They work together. And both need to be playing together. Um you have to be experiencing both of them. 
and the, the, you know that that's kind of how the the whole you know animist spirit model works right um but i feel like i guess that applies philo- philosophically to all the models but anyway not the point point being um yeah i don't know i oddly i guess what i found was acceptance in the mundane and acceptance in not always being the most witchy all the time and now that i'm coming back into it i i feel like I feel rusty, you know, like my, my psychic senses are a little, you know, <laughs> not what they, what they were, but they're back, you know, like I, I can, um, I can feel, I can sense, I can see, um, not as sharp, not as quick, but it's there and it's not, you know, it's not as if it's some kind of like, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. being punished for anything. You know what I mean? The 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 psychic senses are very it much use like it or you lose it. Needed to do that, you know. It, I I really do. I really think that like I don't mean to like make it about me, but like my experience just seems to be so pertinent to what we're talking. I mean, about. we haven't seen you for like six months. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I mean it. It it really that six months did a lot of good. Um, I just I've become I don't know more grounded. Uh. I kind of have a better understanding uh, about, I guess, kind of really what it is that I believe in. Like I said, uh, you know, I, un- I I get it now, at least better. Um, yeah, I don't know. There was just a lot of acceptance and like surrender uh, throughout um, the last six months. And that 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 work has been really good for me you know i'm having some interesting experiences right now uh with <laughs> i have to do some divination but <laughs> that that's a that's kind of a witch drama not to do that right we were just talking about it but i don't know if it's actually <laughs> witch drama but i have to figure out if it was something or if it wasn't but that's why i'm not jumping to conclusions i have to do some divination yeah you got to do your legwork on this kind of stuff yeah, that's why I don't, uh, I don't just, I like old school magic. You, you divine first before you start making assumptions, but yeah, there has been some, some peculiarities that since an incident, I don't even want to talk about it because it seems <laughs> foolish. Cause I'm not like, like, like we said, I'm not particularly, uh, I don't want to say like I'm scared or anything, but you know. Just it was a know. it was a notable a notable happenstance that ought to be investigated. Yeah, <laughs> two that yeah, yeah two in the same day. You oh, know, I see. Yeah, um, I guess I mean, do you guys mind if I just to chat about that? Just shoot the shit. Do you guys go mind? for it? This is the place. Sorry, for it. I said yeah. you. You. It's a that's a local cat turn of phrase. I apologize. Yeah, you oh, you ain't, you ain't a friend. You're, 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 you're fine. You're you're fine. You're fine. Um, but, uh, so, now the first thing was a little weird. Um, I was just chilling in my room, and I was like, I'm thirsty, I'm gonna go downstairs. And I go downstairs, and I'm like, huh, that's weird, the house feels oppressive. You ever, and I know fish, I I know all of us, but I know you kind of do those, um, trips where you look for, like, strange, high strangeness and liminal space. Mm -hmm. And, um... Do you ever go into a space and it's just like super heavy? Yeah, like, like oppressive. Like you walk into a place that's usually a zone of comfort and everything seems to have taken a slight step to the left. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it just it feels it, it it's like feels like a vice on your head sometimes. And um I was like, well, this is strange because this wasn't what it was earlier, right? The the whole environment had changed. And I literally just stepped out of my room. Um, and it's not even to say that my room is particularly warded. As I said, I haven't been doing much. Um, but anyway, I went downstairs and now my grandmother, uh, she, um, she was very Catholic, but she practiced a lot of, uh, folk magic without ever even knowing it, but that's what she was doing. Um, Italian in particular, Italian folk magic. And, um, she had, she had this picture of of Jesus um with the uh the what is it the um oh the heart you know with the white and blue light i can't yeah. remember what it's called all of a sudden divine mercy i believe yeah and um 
she had that picture blessed. And it's been ages since it was. But anyway, it's been hanging up in our vestibule for a hundred years. The only time we ever take it down is if we're like moving furniture or like something like a bed or something in and out, you know, something big that's going to knock it over. And it has never fallen. Never. My grandmother's been dead for many years. She was she died two years before a year before I was born. Um, so and I'm 30. So it's been a long time and it has never fallen by itself. Now, of course, logic, logic brain kicks in first. And I was like, the nail fell out, you know, blah, blah, blah. But my, of course, my mom was like, it's weird. She was like, so I got the, I got a bad feeling. You know, my mom's like, I got the heebie-jeebies from it. And I was like, all right, well, let me go look. Right. And I'm looking around. She's like, I can't find the screw or the nail. She thought it was a nail. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And, uh, you know, I go looking in there because I didn't want anyone to step on it. You know what I mean? In the vestibule when they're coming in or whatever or looking for the mail or anything. So I go and I look and I find it's a screw. I was like, okay, well, I was like, it probably stripped the hole. You know what I mean? The, 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 the hole that it was in, it's ancient and it probably just stripped, you know. It didn't. I screwed it back in real tight and it was actually hard to get back in. So I was like, all right, that's weird, but nothing crazy. So I was like, whatever. I mean, but it, the weird, only thing weird really was this non-stripped hole. And then uh, my mom and my roommate were like, we got a bad feeling when it happened. I was like, all right, well, that's that's nothing. I was like, you know, I really didn't think much of it. And then later that night when my partner, when Darian came home, uh, I was leaning up against the, the sink and we have a fan in the kitchen window. And all of a sudden, when I tell you the scent of cigarette smoke, I was 100% certain that someone was in my yard blowing cigarette smoke into my fan. Like, it was it was as if someone was standing there blowing cigarette smoke. It wasn't like, it wasn't a drift on the wind. It wasn't like that. It was, it was, I know cigarette smoke. I know when you're walking through a plume of smoke, my, my father um, smoked for years. And I was like, okay, this is weird. But and and my back is to the window, and I got a feeling. That's another thing. I got a feeling when I got hit with this intense smell of cigarette. Intense smell of cigarette. And I whipped around real fast because I got I got scared. I really thought someone was behind me. And um, I sw- turn around, and no one's there. Of course and i'm looking i tell darian's like what's wrong and i'm like babe i was like smoke 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 he's like i didn't smell anything and i was like come here and he's and you know he can't smell it he can't smell it i go outside now i'm i'm i guess i'm a little paranoid because our back door we don't have a back door in our yard it dry rotted because it was wooden it was real old even though we have a new one we haven't had anyone to put it up um and so i'm thinking to separate like, you from the alleyway was, right i'm yeah. thinking someone was came up the alley and I'm like, even though it's it's almost impossible to do, but people can climb, you know, and I people are weird right now. The world is kind of crazy. So I'm freaking out. And I actually go out there with a kitchen knife just to make sure that no one was like in the breezeway, um, which is like this sort of mini alley that's beside our houses. It was it's pretty much a archaic um, <laughs> uh, air conditioning. We have these big holes in the side of our houses. Can um <laughs> Sorry, connecting our breeze this to this breezeway, mm-hmm. and um, I was like making sure no one was up there. I made sure no one was in the alley. But the weird thing was that when I went out there, this intense, intense, continuous smell of cigarette smoke was gone. It wasn't by the window. Oh. It wasn't in the yard. It wasn't in the alleyway. It was, there was no one like blowing smoke. Or, you know, you can see it because our privacy fences are high enough to block each other, but you can see smoke rising. You know what I mean? Um, and like Darian didn't like smoke a secret cigarette or anything like no, that. Or... No, hmm. Darian hasn't smoked a secret cigarette in a hundred years. Wow. Um, there were no cigarettes in the house. He was here, and it just was gone. It like this can like and from from running from my kitchen window to the backyard, the scent was gone, as if it never existed, and and the feeling definitely wasn't good. So, uh, I would say this... that's worth investigating. It is. It is like synchronicity works like that. Like it could have just been someone walking past the alley and smoking and it wafting up the alleyway. However, the fact that it came from a random ass person walking does not necessarily or even often mean that that wasn't synchronistic and meaningful to you. It could be that he walked across the alleyway 
at that moment because something was trying to communicate with you and that was the only way it could. So like right. weird ass communications from things, weird ass indicators of things sometimes manifest that way. Like, you know, a synchronicity being what it is, things happen in the order they need to happen in order for something to communicate with you. So like, I would definitely look into it if nothing else. Like if cigarette smoke has a specific association for you, that's very important. You need to think about that. Like, and the thing is, and that's kind of exactly what that was kind of, it was funny because um, I know where my mind went. I don't know if I'll just say it. And then you can tell me if I could cut it out. I thought about your dad because he does work. Well, <laughs> magic. I and mean, he did he, smoke, so I don't know. Like maybe he's just well, like taking because, pot shots at you or something. That's what I thought. Well, maybe. that's the thing. Like, here's the, like I mean, I definitely it it came to mind in the sense of like it's an interesting smell for me to smell. Right. I I never smell cigarettes. Um, number one, I smell a lot of weed. My neighbors all smoke weed. Mm -hmm. Um, I have never <laughs> smelled cigarettes. Um, so that was a little weird already. That was strange. Um, it was, it was definitely out of the norm, mm -hmm. right? Like there, I'm, I'm very, very aware of my surroundings and for something to kind of break that sort of, uh, norm of my area, I'm, I'm very just aware of it. Um, mm -hmm. not in a paranoid way, usually. Um, but because of kind of their feelings on uh, this kind of, uh, you know, sympathetic type magic of the picture falling, which is revealing. And then this kind of really peculiar, very haunted like experience that definitely gave me the heebie jeebies. Um, I don't get the heebie jeebies easy. Um, it takes a lot for spiritual shenanigans to truly like freak me out. Um, something really, like, really, really weird has to happen for me to kind of be like, okay, now I'm scared, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, but, like, that, that actually felt threatening, mm. and it came with this peculiar headache, and it was just very peculiar, and I can't, the reason I can't divulge too, too much is because I don't know if... So the reason I said witch drama, there was an experience mm -hmm. that I had during uh, a meeting of witches um, recently. Uh, I'm going to talk in code a little bit. Um, where uh, this gentleman, he seemed oddly offended by me, by everything that I said to him. Mm. And it was really peculiar. Because like, I, like one point we were just talking about the mandragora oil and um i was like oh have you ever read corinne boyer i was like she's amazing at like you know folk, uh, the green magic work cunning um you know that kind of thing and for whatever reason it, like that was the first sign of like some like his response to that was very odd um and i couldn't really place what it was and he was just kind of like nope just uh good old scott cunningham and it seemed kind of odd to respond <clears throat> that way you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it seems, and I was, it seems a little i don't i don't know <laughs> yeah and i'm like i was kind of like that was a little funny right like i and like i'm really good with people so like for me i was like that's that was an odd response but okay you know and keeping in mind i'm like still running around trying because i just arrived and i'm still trying to get myself like adjusted but as is customary when you go to a party or a get together you schmooze you know you say hi you talk for a few minutes and you know you get adjusted you know what i mean and um I would like come in and talk to him. And then uh, there were a couple of other encounters that I don't remember as well. However, um, they were smaller in comparison to this, this kind of bigger event that happened later in the evening where um, my partner is sitting pretty much on top of me. He has his arm on top of my arm and um, this person's talking at me about like what, like he's, he's explaining witchcraft to me. And it was kind of weird because it was it was polite, but it was poignanted. And Darian kept like flicking me, like to get my attention, because Darian's like something weird's going on, something weird is going on. And and it was weird because he kept whispering it, 
And I mean, I thought at first it was just like this sort of strange social interaction. You know how like social interactions come with energy, right? Because they're an exchange of energy. And, you know, you pick up on that, especially if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. But um, Darian was like, no, there's something really weird going on. This guy is weird. This guy is weird. This guy is weird. And I'm like, I don't know, babe. He's been here before. Why now? What's changed? And this guy's like talking at me. But then all of a sudden I get that distinct, I don't know. You ever been prodded psychically? Do anyone, you ever sit with somebody who starts trying to read you without your permission? Kind of a jab. Yeah. Um, and you're, and it's uncomfortable. It's, it's not, it's not a pleasant experience, especially when you're not well, number one, uh, inviting it. And, um, I was like, okay, you know, but then he, uh, the, the thing is, is that he followed up with this kind of explanation. He was kind of this, this, I don't, I'm thinking that maybe he thought I was being braggadocious. You know, maybe he has an opinion. Cause I was taught, like, I was joking about, um, someone was talking to me about traditional witchcraft and I was like, oh, all the tradcraft authors, I don't even remember all of them or something. I just made some stupid joke or whatever. And, um, I don't know if, you know, if I offended him somehow or he thought I was being, bra you know, brag a lot or whatever, but he started bragging once again, looking at me and continuously making a point to stare at me about, you know, his high ceremonial magic and, you know, the, the angels and the Enochian <laughs> magic. And I was just kind of like, you're like, bro, like, you, you don't you have anything that? to prove to me. You don't have anything to prove to me or anybody else. Why are right. You... I, right. Right, because I was like, I don't even work with any of that. Like, that's not my that's not my thing. I was like, you know, like that's cool, you know. And he was like, oh, it was so peculiar. And the weird thing is, is like, because one of the first things is, to, th um, there's a reason I'm telling you this story because I kind of had to describe this to kind of get back to a part about the the smoke, you know, the, the 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 that whole part of it, the psychic part of that. Anyway, um. So when he's bragging about his high ceremonial magic and all of that, and I was kind of like, you know, that's great. And I was being very polite, you know, because once again, I wasn't bragging. I, I just I just talk about witchcraft when I'm around witches. You know what I mean? Like, it's... It's a thing you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's what one does. <laughs> um, and, you know, we, of course, we talk, we, we all will talk about our, our magic in the context of our tradition or our paradigm. Um that's kind of also kind of what we do. And, and, and in respective circles, you respect the other person. You know what I mean? You, you, and you also try to find where that fits in, you know, with your own, you know what I mean? Which is what I try to do. Um, and anyway, uh, he was really odd throughout the night. And at one point, I thought he was like trying to like, I don't know, glamour or something. And I was like, that's like, or, you know, do that like, kind of like fascination magic or what have, whatever you call it doesn't really matter. Um, I was like, that's really peculiar. Because um, I, I wouldn't have expected that. You know what I mean? It just seemed really strange. Yeah. But uh, to jump back to the, the well, kind of later to go back to the, the, the cigarette smoke incident, one of the one psychic impression that I got, and I said this to Darian sort of after, I was like, I know this sounds really weird especially coming from me. Um, I'm not big on like using um, Christian um, mythology. Like I don't like demons, that kind of thing. I kind of see angels and demons as demons and they're, they're celestial animistic sort of um, powers or virtues or what, whatever you want to call them. Um, so it's weird for me to kind of, say this but i said i know this is going to sound really weird i said but like if you've ever worked with like and i've i've I'm been friends with a lot of luciferians i am friends with a, a lot of luciferians so working with um infernal magic is something i've been around a lot not that i've practiced myself but i've i've been around it i've participated i guess just by you know prox you know proximity um and I was like, it kind of feels like what you would expect, like a quote unquote demon. Mm. And I don't even know exactly what that means. Mm. That's interesting. But like there was this sort of. Um, I don't even know what that means. It was just the words that it was very. 
uh, it was like more like a, a clairvoyance, a clear knowing. Mm -hmm. Like it was just, this is what it feels like. And I said those words because that's what it, that was the impression. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, and, it's, it's kind of interesting when the subconscious and your subconscious is taking in all this information all the time, like whether it's physical information, non-physical information, spiritual information, it's, it's, it's job is to take that data and, and look at patterns and look for patterns and then kind of shove them at your conscious thinking in its own way. And sometimes it's a gut feeling. Sometimes it's a choice of words that you didn't necessarily think about. Yeah. And so when you catch yourself saying certain things offhand, sometimes it isn't you saying them. Sometimes it's your subconscious saying them. Like uh, there's a case in like threat assessment for, for women and, and men too. But um, you ever heard a woman say, yeah, man, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go hang out with this dude. He's a Tinder date. You know, I, uh, if, so, if, if if you see a news story about me tomorrow, mm -hmm. you know what fucking happened. Well, she's making that joke. But the reason she chose those words and made that joke is that something in her subconscious registers him as a threat. And she right. might not even be aware of what she's saying to you herself. And spiritual shit does manifest in some of the same ways. Like if you catch yourself making a joke about something or commenting offhandedly about something that doesn't seem like it's quite... It doesn't seem like it fits the conversation you're having. Sometimes the reason you were driven to use that word choice is your subconscious is trying desperately to get you to say something and realize something that it, it's, it's too complex for it to just be a gut feeling. Because your subconscious doesn't have a Broca's area. That's the area of your brain that lets you speak. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a Broca's area. So it, it can't speak for itself. All it can do is shove these impulses at your consciousness and hope that you get the point. You know, and so when you catch yourself saying shit like that, you need to pay attention to it because there's a reason you said it. See, I love that you're. You see, I love that you're saying that because it, it kind of really speaks to the fact that, like, that 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 impression um, was laden with like feelings, though, like feelings that I can interpret in like, uh, like just images, like like um. The re like as I was saying that, as I was kind of like, this is weird, you know, I, I like and I kept like trying to make excuses before I said it. But there was this there were there were like um it felt like I literally said it feels like a Catholic demon. <laughs> I don't know why I would use that phrase like like mm. you said, but that was like the uh, that was just me trying to explain precisely what I meant. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's not a paradigm that's mine, it's not a spirituality that that belongs to me, but um, there were, you know, image like just, just these basic images of the parish that I used to go to when I was little, like, and and I haven't been there in a long time, or at least a, a little while now. And like, you know, it was just like the the, the floorboards and and the side of pews, and like, um, and in particular, it showed me the confessional, which was weird. And I was like, okay, that's the, you know, that was weird. The confessional box, you know, where you mm -hmm. go in and whatever with the sims or whatever um i don't like that whole thing but anyway um it was that was that those were my impressions and it was really peculiar like i'm not really trying to be the 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 jumpy scary witchy person that we talked about earlier but like i don't know it just was weird also trust your really intuition weird. like don't doubt yourself you know right up because that's how people that's how people miss things like you you get an impulse you think of something it's like <clears throat> when you're driving around but you get mixed up and you're not quite sure where you need to go but you've driven that way a bunch of times your hands know where to go your body and your motion your, your 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 muscle memory know how to do it and and your first impulse is hey i gotta turn left right here but if you second guess it for even half a second you're gonna be like no 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 it's, it's over on the right so we're on the right so we're on the right and then you turn right and you realize that you've gone the wrong direction that first impulse is most frequently the most reliable and the most accurate. Especially but, we, you know, right. We second guess so much shit. No, no, it's it's cool. It's cool. We're just like, we second guess. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. No, go ahead, please. Uh, I'm so sorry. I thought you. No, 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 you're good. You're good. We all um, we all have ADHD here. It's fine. <laughs> like, it's it's especially because like I've I've. I really wasn't expecting anything. Like I normally like I, there's a pattern when like I'm being um I've learned to like know when I'm being silly, like when I'm being um overly uh you know 
spooky or whatever. You know what I mean? Like when when you look to scare yourself and you know you're looking for ghosts where there are none kind of thing. I kind of know how I get with that. There's almost like an expectation. Um, and when when that happens, I kind of know that it's not real, because then I've just kind of you, you maybe know that you're, it. You know that you're kind of working yourself up a little bit, yeah. Right. This was out of the blue, completely unprovoked. Um, and as far as the picture thing, I really didn't think anything of it. Like that, to me, I was just like, okay, bad feelings, you know, picture of you know a protective you know, figure, you know, you think, you know, and I, like, I rationalized it, you know what I mean? Like, the picture falling isn't really what did it for me. It was after that, and it was just like, okay, well, okay, you know what I mean? That, that omen wasn't for me, you know what I mean? That was for somebody else to experience, to relay that information to me, for me to interpret, um, and that's kind of what, what, how, like, I kind of came to the conclusion. So, you know, there is that, that fun, <laughs> that fun witchy drama. I'm sorry to go off on a tangent. It was just something I kind of, I, like, I've been wanting to talk to, like, other people about it, honestly. <laughs> it just, just gave me an opportunity to, like, you know, pick brains with witch friends. <laughs> That's what uh, we do this here. Is... This, we talk <laughs> shop. <laughs> this is only my opinion, but, like, regardless of whether or not this is something serious or something that the weirdo yeah. direct at you it never hurts to lay down new wards ever it doesn't hurt to do it nobody mm -hmm. is is harmed by the process of putting down new wards so regardless use this as an opportunity to fucking clean your wards up like mm. that that would totally. be my approach on that be like yeah. yeah it might be something it might not until i know though i'm gonna take this as a sign that i need to fix my wards a little so. yeah that's why like i said like i don't really know for certain like what it is because i'm not even 100 percent sold myself well, i mean um, every, every everything like this is based on multiple data points so like one weird instance with this dude or one weird evening with this dude might not mean anything but if you go back again and he's there and it happens again that's another data point on that chart you know right so you know you're adding context and and nuance and you're getting a better understanding of things like you don't have to understand it all right now just do your damage control and hope for the best and give benefit of the doubt until it's proven that the person doesn't deserve it. And at which point you go ham. Right. But until then, you know, <laughs> until then, you know, clean your words up and, and, and just like see to your household, you know? And yeah, that's, that's kind of what, where I was at. I, I just haven't like, that's like I said, the only thing I haven't done yet is also to the divination part of it, but I do want to, um, I want to clean up a little bit first uh, before okay. I go and start divining anything but for sure kind of, kind of let it be off of your mind for a bit so that you don't accidentally guide the divination toward a, the conclusion that exactly that too it also helps when i do that as well just because like you know even when you don't intend to have certain feelings like it's easy to kind of be like you know as you're like i i wonder even in the state that i'm in where i'm like i'm not even 100 percent sold it's anything is you know happening um uh, you can still kind of, like you said, guide your reading into kind of telling you what you want it to say. I mean, it's confirmation bias, and mm. and and magicians and witches are not immune to it. Of course, <laughs> we really are. I know. We're almost a little bit more susceptible to it. We we can be. We absolutely yes. can be. If we're not careful, we really can be. That is yeah. for damn sure. Um, we are just but, under uh, two hours. If we did want to kind of summarize any concluding thoughts. We're about like a minute 45. My or an hour 45. Be, everybody just relax. <laughs> Everyone mm -hmm. relax. My summary is I actually went out to go get weed and I'm at a crossroad right now. So pay your patrons, <laughs> bitches. Fucking, <laughs> yo, hell okay. yeah. Not coming at you patron, live from the weed right run. now. No, coming at you live uh, from the crossroads. From the crossroads. <laughs> oh, you can oh, even hear the cars up and by. There it is. Hold <laughs> on, let me get you the change in the ground noise just for the podcast authenticity. Three coins, baby. There you go. <laughs> the wonders Penny, so of modern technology. Those are a rare commodity. <laughs> we need to do that sometime. Like, we all go out to our local weird space and, and come mm. and cast from there and just talk about what we're experiencing as we're there. That would be, Ooh, that'd be fun. Wow. That would that'd actually be, be really neat. Or at least maybe ideas. do like uh 
Oh, how would we record that, though? I'd have to think about the logistics. We can think about that, though. You just though. get good Wi-Fi. Like, I'm talking on my Wi-Fi right... Or on my uh, data right now. Right, but I record like with my computer. That's the thing. Oh. Ooh. Maybe, like, remote well, desktop maybe on your Jay phone is like, yeah. Maybe Jay's, like, the hacker. And he's, like, at the relay base. <laughs> like, coming into you live. And Jay's like, all right, I got it. Thanks. You're in. Man in the I'm chair. In. Guy in the chair. You know? In the chair. <laughs> Hell yeah. I really do feel oh, like God. guy in the chair. You know I have what? two monitors. You can do, you and can I need do a third. video recording, <laughs> too. And, like, if we did, like, a video stream for that episode. That would be neat. Sounds pretty cool. That would be pretty rad. Mm. Or we great. finally just maybe figure out a way someday to meet up all in one physical location. <laughs> that would well, be cool, too. Well, as soon as I move to Michigan, like, it'll be easier for us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah you'll get you three, no issue. It's just Ropen and me that's going to be the problem. I'll come get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if they uh, let me cross the border. Yeah, I don't even know what the border situation is right now. Neither do I, Dan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything. Yeah. Either. Um, but, but um, uh, I, what about you, Scott? What are your, uh... I just, I guess, that, you know, because of the way it started, I wanted to just kind of wrap up the more, uh, or, like, you know, original point of this, of this episode, I guess. Um, I wanted to, you know, as always, I like to talk directly to our listeners. Just remember, I suppose, uh, accept where you are at in the, mo you know, where you're at in your life and move through it. Um, with ease, be kind to yourself, and you know, slowly but surely things will change. That's that's kind of my thing. Hmm. I like that a lot. Absolutely, absolutely. Very good sentiment to wrap up on. Mm -hmm. So, um, that wraps up our discussion. I don't know if we might. I don't know. Maybe like for future ones, we might like go back and forth between like a semi-planned loose topic, and then you know maybe just do episodes that are we'll more free form. We'll dip out of it as often as it suits us. Yeah, um, yeah we're just gonna kind of go should... where the wind takes us, like whatever we feel is the yeah. thing we want to talk about. Because absolutely, I feel, yeah. I don't think like don't even like I wouldn't even sweat it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if 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 a topic comes up, cool. If not, also cool. You know, let it happen organically. I think it'll just you know. It, you know, it kind of just harkens to the irreverence of, I guess, the podcast in general mm -hmm. anyway, you know, just to kind of, you know. We're very what will be, will be. in our own special brand of chaos. <laughs> right. So what will be will be. I think it's nice. I like it. I, I actually think the format's pleasant, mm -hmm. honestly. It's real yeah. comfortable. It is. It is mm -hmm. real Well, with so. that, we will wrap up this one, and we will see you all in the next one. Bye! Bye.